This is your weekly tech recap with Jamal Abbott. News and insights about the tech world in plain English. Thank you for listening. In today's episode, it looks like the T-Mobile Sprint deal might be in jeopardy. T-Mobile announces a mobile banking service, the rise of video streaming, and more tech IPOs being released to the market. Looks like there's trouble brewing for the T-Mobile Sprint deal. There were several reports that came out this week about the Department of Justice not liking the existing deal between T-Mobile and Sprint. And the reaction from the market, they are not too confident in this deal actually getting done. Now, both CEOs from Sprint and T-Mobile have denied the reports and said they're going to allow the process to play itself out. But both companies state that it's important for them to combine and merge in order to stay competitive against the big dogs out there, a.k.a. Verizon and AT&T, in order to provide a different service that is in the best interest for consumers. Sprint also issued a letter to the FCC this week talking about the different reasons why they're in bad shape and how business is not looking too good for them, all in the move to get the regulators to approve the merger between the two companies. We are keeping an eye on this one as the story develops. We're not going to entertain the rumors a whole lot, but this is what's going on in the market here today between the two companies. As this is going on, T-Mobile decided to make some more news for themselves. In previous episodes, we learned about T-Mobile launching home internet service to compete against the cable companies. Then on the next episode, we learned that they were going to develop a TV service and have that introduced to several markets in the United States. Now this week, we got more T-Mobile news, and they're going to be releasing a mobile bank account. Now, what sets this bank account different from the others that are out there from traditional players? There's no fees associated with this mobile bank account. So this is a checking account. You can earn interest on this. Now, there's a couple of caveats with that. You have to have a certain T-Mobile plan, but you don't have to be a T-Mobile customer in order to open up an account. But if you are a customer and then you happen to have a certain dollar amount deposited in this account, you may be eligible to get the higher interest rates and the opportunity to earn some interest back on your existing dollars in your account. And that this is a mobile first account and they've partnered with Bank Mobile to make this happen. Now this is interesting because T-Mobile is really putting themselves out there as the uncarrier, right? So they're not gonna allow the the big players to boss them around they're going to shake up the industry just a little bit just like we learned in the previous episodes but they're really putting themselves out there and i think this is really a move for not necessarily a show but it's just to give the government an idea of what t-mobile will do if they're allowed to merge with sprint so they're going to continue to think of new ways to innovate and disrupt the market And I believe that this mobile banking account is another example of them doing that. How this will play out and how successful this will be and then how consumers will respond to this, time will tell. But at least they're trying and they're trying to do something just a little bit different. So I applaud them for that. And I can't wait to see how this turns out. The rise of video streaming services. So this is also known as OTT or over the top. Whereas you would have your video service come over an internet connection instead of coming through on a wall outlet or coming from a traditional satellite provider. This is important because Netflix released their numbers for the market and they made some pretty impressive moves in the first quarter. So this first quarter in 2019, they made $4.5 billion just in this first quarter. That's, That's a lot of money. They also set a new record for themselves too. They added 9.6 million subscribers. So that brings their total subscriber numbers almost to about 150 million subscribers altogether. Now in the release for the, the investors, they say, you know what, this industry is still growing. They only have about 2% of the internet traffic total and then really only about 10% of the total TV viewing market. So that's amazing. And there's still more room to grow. Now, they did acknowledge the fact that, you know what, 
Disney and some other competitors are coming out there with their own direct-to-consumer offerings, but they're not really too concerned about that because they said, you know what, there's enough room in the market for other companies to come in there and to compete and to win different subscribers away from the traditional linear TV services. So they're not completely worried about new entrants coming into the market. Now, I did a quick survey on Instagram, on my Instagram story, and I just asked, hey, are you still watching regular TV? You responded, and then 75% of you all said you don't watch regular TV. So something to think about, and it's only going to get more interesting as we see more streaming video on demand offerings come into the market, as well as some advertise, advertising base video on demand services so we'll look into this in a future episode where we'll break down the transition from the over the air tv services so you know with the bunny ears you get your tv from the air and you're clicking the, the little clicker to get to a certain channel to watch your favorite show going to cable services where they're providing the linear tv where you have a bunch of channels that you're not looking at to now we're in the on-demand world where we're watching TV and watching movies and shows in our own time. So stay tuned for that one, and that one's going to be a fun episode. The other thing to note, too, about the streaming rise and how they're capturing the viewers' attention is that with Hulu, so that's one of the advertising-based video-on-demand providers. Hulu has a package where they offer it for about $6 a month, and you can subscribe to live TV, not necessarily like live TV, I take that back. You can get on-demand video and movies with some commercials in it. But with this package alone, even though they sold it for $6 to consumers, they actually made $1.5 billion in advertising revenue from this service. So that's amazing. So this is an area that's growing. And then I want you to look this up. Pluto TV. If you're into watching TV and then you don't have time to be sitting at home and watching TV, you want to watch it on the go or check out maybe some old movies that you might be interested in, check out Pluto TV. That's another advertising based video on demand service that's really popular, supported by ads. But that one has about 12 million subscribers, I believe, uh, at, the, at the time of this recording. So this one's growing and this one's going to get. A lot more growth here in the future because the advertising dollars are still being spent on traditional television which nobody's really looking at these days it's all mobile first it's on the go and on your devices with you instead of sitting in front of the tv in the living room so we'll keep an eye on this one so this is why this service is really popping right now is because all the attention is heading to mobile devices. We've been here for quite a while, especially since we're on social media. And then our viewing habits are starting to go that way too with mobile services. And now the advertisers and the content's following this path too. So we're gonna keep an eye on this one. Should be really interesting. Our next story involves more tech IPOs. So IPO stands for Initial Public Offering, and this is when a company decides to go from being a privately owned company to putting itself out there on the market for investors like ourselves to be able to participate and invest into the company and the, the things of the business. So we have two tech IPOs that are dropping, that have dropped this week. One is Zoom Communications, and Zoom Communications is an enterprise video communications provider where they provide video services, conferencing, phones, and then other type of communication services. And they've been doing this for the last eight years, and they finally released their IPO. The other company of interest is Pinterest. So Pinterest is the social idea sharing site. And the funny thing about this too, about them releasing this IPO, they don't want to be known just as a social media company, but they want to be known as a place where you can get ideas and get inspiration. So they have over 250 million members in their community, and they started in 2010. They also released their IPO this week. Now, 2019 is going to be the year of the tech IPO. We're going to have more 
tech companies going public. One of the famous ones is Uber. And we learned in the previous episode that Lyft went public. So you can buy Lyft stock now if you're into that kind of thing. But we're going to have more tech IPOs coming. And the crazy thing about this is that these are companies that haven't been around for a long time. And now they're publicly traded companies and then you can buy them. And, you know, it's, it's amazing that you can take an idea that solves a specific problem and then bring it to the market for other people to have and invest into your product or service. So quite amazing. So more tech IPOs to come here real soon for 2019. Okay, so we listened to the tech stories and now we're going to get to some questions. And I have a couple answers for them. Our first question comes from Stuart. And Stuart asks, why are you forced to get a landline included in a bundle with TV and internet? So great question. And the reason why they do this is to not waste the resources that they have in their portfolio. So for instance, if I'm talking about the local cable company out here in Las Vegas, they have tv they have internet and they have phone service now it would be uh, quite a waste if i decide to cut my phone completely and then just go strictly with an internet only offering the reason why i haven't quite dropped the tv service and even the phone service i still technically need the phone for the things that i do on the job and then it's a lot cheaper for me to keep this as a bundle instead of me having two out of the three services. And then that's really something that they do by design because they realize that these services aren't really all that popular anymore. People don't really want landline phones when you have a mobile phone on you at all times. And it has way better capabilities compared to that traditional wall phone that you used to have way back in the day. The other thing too with TV, folks are getting away from the TV services, but also at the same time too, If you already have internet and you already have TV, they're going to give you a sweeter deal if you combine all three of them together instead of having those individual services by themselves. So it's really a a move to keep you onto these services. They still have to pay for the equipment. They still have to pay for the labor, but they don't want to lose your business in in that area. And if they lose your business in that area, that's going to affect them and the things on their balance sheet. And that's just not going to be good for them if they're a publicly traded company. So that's really the the main thing. They don't want to lose you as a customer. So they're gonna bundle all these services to keep you and to make it more attractive for you to to keep the bundle. Even if you may not use it, it looks better for them to, to have you on the bundle instead of having you separate from that. This next question comes from Christine and she asks, what are some essential customer service skills? Essential customer service skills. I would say the number one skill that you need to have being in customer service, and this doesn't matter if you're the cashier on a, at the register or if you're somebody that answers phone calls for a company or even being up on the food chain and then you have other business clients that you interact with. The most important customer service skill that you need is to have empathy. You need to let your customers know that you actually care for them. If you care for your customers, they're going to want to continue to do business with you. And that's good for you, right? Because you need customers to survive. You need customers to thrive in your area of business. If they don't feel like they are being treated fairly and that you don't care for them, they can easily take their business, their wallet, and then go to one of your competitors. So that's the number one thing you need to have is empathy for the customer. I would also say, too, another important skill is to have great communication skills. And that, that's not only speaking, but also listening to what your customers are saying. So you, you need to understand. And that's where this empathy comes in, right? If you're empathetic to what their needs are, you're more willing to listen. And then you're more willing to try to do what you can do within your ability to take care of the customer. And when you do those things, your customers are gonna come back to you with more of their problems. They're gonna come back to you when they need some help, or they're gonna just come back to you because they know that you are dependable and that 
even though they may be able to do it themselves or maybe they can have somebody else do it for cheaper if you just do the best job out there they're going to come back to you regardless and then sometimes they'll do that it doesn't matter like what your price is or you know how how inexpensive or how expensive it is if you do the best out there compared to the rest of the market they're going to come back to you over and over again i that's what i would say just a, just a couple skills empathy having great communication skills and then just doing what you need to do to take care of the customer if you have those things you will succeed in this area and this is an area that i can speak to because i love my customers i love taking care of them and those are the exact same skills that i use to take care of my customers and I know they appreciate it because I hear from them. They tell me these kind of things. So use these skills and then you'll do quite fine in your area involving customer service. Now, Mina asked the next question, and this one's a little funny. Do you still get phone books delivered to your house by the phone company? Mina, I do, yes. Now, I have no idea why I still get these phone books delivered to my house. As soon as I get it, it goes straight to the recycling. And this thing has, it's like thick, right? It's like two dictionaries combined together. There's no reason why people today need a phone book when you have all of this information found in the phone book easily accessible on the internet. Now I get it, you know, phone books have been around forever. Some folks still prefer to use a phone book, but it's just, it's really inefficient. And I, I understand why these phone companies keep sending these phone books out. Well, because people are still paying to have their business advertising these phone books. So if they have the money to receive from these phone books, they're going to print these up and they're going to get these sent out to the homes. One thing that I did learn is that you can actually opt out of this. And I haven't quite looked into this completely yet. I really should opt out of it. But every time I see this phone book delivered to my house, I kind of laugh. So, yes, I still get the phone book delivered to my house. One of these days, it's not going to happen. And you can easily find the information that you're looking for on a business or even on a person by looking them up on social media and on the Internet and on Google. I would even say, too, that with the social media sites that we have today, that's your modern day phone book. We don't need phone numbers with this, but if you look up a person's name on on Instagram or on Snapchat or on Facebook or whatever that platform is you you may be able to find that person on there and then you can usually reach them or that business you can easily reach them and use those resources and get that additional information that you couldn't get from a phone book now the people that don't want to participate in the quote unquote phone book of the internet they're just not on not on the social media sites. The bad thing, though, is that there's still websites out there, white pages, and I, there's a couple other ones out there that they still find a way to get your information, publish that out there. And if you do find yourself on one of those sites, you can easily get your information removed off of those. But to sum this up, I still get a phone book. You really don't need a phone book here today. And then I would say the internet and social media is the modern phone book for today, even though we don't really need to know phone numbers in this day and age. Well, we've come to the end of this weekly tech report, and I want to thank you so much for hanging out and for rocking with me on this one. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. That's jamal at the phone guy. That's T-H-A. Don't forget the A. I couldn't get the E for this one because that web domain was unavailable. So Jamal at thephoneguy.com. You can shoot me an email, ask me any questions there. You can reach me on all social media platforms. Pinterest, I'm still, I got that, but I haven't really used that to the best of my ability. But maybe I'll jump on there and put a little bit more effort into this now that they're a publicly traded company. But you can reach me on social media. And let me know what you think. If you want to leave a rating or review, go ahead and do that. I really appreciate it. And I did check iTunes here recently, and I saw a couple ratings out there. And I really appreciate you for taking that time and leaving a rating. It really means a lot to me. And I can't wait to talk to you again next week. Until then, keep your head up. Have a great day. Talk soon.